This video is not intended for anyone 13 or younger. Hello, viewers, and welcome back to My Hero Academia, Chapter 284 Reaction. I'm your humble host, Josh24214. And yeah, we are on Chapter 284. And on the previous chapter, we had Midoriya basically unlocking, finally unlocking Sh Hanashimura's quirk of float, and now he's currently floating in the air, gathering all the heroes with the other heroes who are with him, are safe in the air, and Midoriya's going to fight Shikaraki at 75%, and we realize that, yeah, Shikaraki is not basically invincible yet. The 75%, there are still issues with them. <clears throat> Shikaraki's power, so. So let's get into the chapter and see where this continues from here. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It only takes two simple clicks. Click, click. Enjoy the episode. So right off the bat, we don't get a full cover page as always. And we just basically get into where we last left off with Midoriya and the heroes are high into the air. And Midoriya's just about to beat the living tar out of Shigaraki with his own fists. And we get our usual title intro with My Hero Academia by Kohei Hodokoshi, translation of Cabal Cook, and lettering of John Hurt again, as always. And our full ch chapter page is... Chapter number 284, which is entitled Deep Blue Battle. As we get in started the chapter with Midoriya's in a monologue saying, If Shigaraki touches the ground again, it'll mean another wave of mass destruction. I gotta keep him up in the air, so they're both fighting in the air, so... So Midoriya took Shigaraki up into the air, and so he can't use his decay quirk. Unless Shikaraki can fly. And I guess uh, Black Whip is having a little issue. And Midoriya goes into his inner monologue saying, No good. My control is shaky. I guess he, this is kind of his first time controlling basically three quirks at one time. Nana, Black Whip, and his base super strength. And we continue with uh, with Midoriya putting all the other heroes onto the ground. With uh, Midoriya saying, Take care of Gran Torino and the rest. With Endeavor continuing saying, They need first aid. Now, get to it, Shoto. And Endeavor, we go inside Endeavor's inner monologue saying, How pathetic. The number one hero should be up there. It should be me. And we cut away to Bakugo as he says, Hang on, Deku, as we quickly cut away to lo Lockdown and Manual, with Manual saying, You're the one guy... Oh. Okay, that's, uh, never mind, with that's Bakugo saying, You're the one guy who needs to keep his distance from that creep. He's no longer being held by, held back by Erasure. But who else can keep Shigaraki off the ground? As we continue with Bakugo and Midoriya and Endeavors looking at each other. With Shigaraki on the next page interrupting saying, You like this? You like the sky that much? Good, cause after I steal one for all, I'll send you straight to heaven. Same goes for that old fool and the others down there. And he and that's implied that uh, Shikaraki's after when he gets one for all, he's just going to basically murder Midoriya and then kill all of his friends. And Midoriya doesn't like having having that threat said to him. He basically shouts, "You're not going to hurt them anymore!" As they continue with their fight. And we move on to the next page. Midoriya and, Sh and Shigaraki begin their bout in up in the air. While Bakugo reminisces and has a bit of a flashback. With Bakugo saying, with, uh, with the flashback starting saying, 
You want us to help with this with his training as we quickly have a flashback to basically pretty much well it's in we go back uh, like a couple of months before all this craziness start with the uh, back at the UA school but don't worry the timeline will be fully clarified where we are in in later on in this chapter as we see whoa whoa what the hell as we clearly see Seraphane, Uraka, and Suyu, with each one of them saying, So what should we do? As we quickly cut away to uh, Midoriya, who freakishly has a afro in this flashback, weirdly enough. As we have All Might starting the conversation, Thanks for taking the time to be here. As Midoriya continues saying, I like some advice about handling my new power. And uh, Seraphine continues saying, You mean Black Whip? I thought you were whipping lo like a pro already. And uh, what's with the new do? Uh, so we're getting a little clarification about Midoriya's uh, afro look. As, uh, oh, okay, that's uh, nice. On the next panel, we see like part of the speech box of Midoriya being part of his afro that's a bit of an artistic choice for hartakoshi there and midoriya explains this it's because i keep losing in a training exercise we call catch a kachan with black whip haven't caught him once yet actually i wanted to ask you sarah about dealing with fast moving targets since you got a course you got a similar quirk and we get a little demonstration of Catch the Kachan rules. If Bakugo evades capture and taps Deku, Midoriya wins. Uh, Bakugo wins. And Uraka just continues saying, But why do explosions come into play? Once a jerk, always a jerk, huh, Bakugo? As we see, um, I think Bakugo argues, saying, Deku's the one who said to make it like a real battle. As we have, when we cut away to All Might, so we continue on to the chapter with Uraka's saying Then tell me what I can do. I'm still learning how to use my wires. How to use my wires, and we say Seraph continues saying And shouldn't Aizawa-sensei be the man to teach whip techniques? As All Might are, is going to explain saying Professor Uraka you're here to teach about body control while breaking in midair. And Uraka asks, But Deku's already good at bouncing around. And Suyu just continues saying, Like hippity hoppity. As uh, All Might continues saying, Well, more power means increased tank time. And Midori says, And Uraka says, Oh! And All Might continues saying, And he needs to master advanced mobility in the air. In midair. And as for Aizawa, Your teacher is busy at the moment. And and by busy, he's at Tartarus at this time. Talking to... Korogiri. So this is lines up to what happens in... Tartarus when we figure out that Kurogiri was uh, Aizawa's old dead friend brought back to life Frankenstein style with uh, Midoriya continuing saying I already got everyone's moves written down senseis too I think we can find some common ground in terms of how we use our bodies and we cut to the next page. We see Uraka and Midoriya having a moment together with Uraka teaching a uh, show. Tried to have Midoriya get used to getting early practice with float before it eventually comes out. With Uraka saying, imagine you're swimming through the air, but keep your le arms and legs balanced. Good, good. As, Ur as Midoriya continues saying, Okay, so that works. So that's how it works. 
and we have inner monologue of Midoriya saying propulsion via by Air Force as we see Midoriya bouncing around with Uraraka saying oh there you go and we have all my continuing saying now stay up in the air and get some coaching on black whip and Midoriya just says got it as we quickly cut away to a conversation between All Might and Bakugo as Bakugo starts the conversation saying it's going great huh and All Might continues saying the float quirk suspends the body in mid-air much like her zero gravity getting a feel for it ahead of time should help him keep it under control when it manifests plus plus contis contis conceptualizing what it's like to fly could lead to unlocking it so they're trying to get float out super early as we continue on the next page as we get a random water bottle at the start of the page as we get into a conversation with all my and Bakugo continues saying with Bakugo saying you can't keep following people forever and and yeah this is the most common sense conversation at any time with Bakugo continuing saying while everybody's practicing with Bakugo saying this ain't like when it it ain't like when it was just super strength pretty soon the cat's gonna fly out of the bag and yeah it kind of makes sense I mean I mean we don't know what the other powers are besides black whip and float and yeah, it used to be easy, but yeah, you could easily argue about Black Whip being like Midoriya's electric energy just turning into whips. That's a found argument, but Float, that's uh, not going to fly anymore. And some people are going to start thinking, hey, wait a minute, there's something going on here. That doesn't make sense. And All Might continues saying, I'm not telling anyone about anything beyond Black Whip, and this training should prevent the next power from exploding out the way this one did. And as we can see, I think it's. I think it's supposed to be All Might still, while they're still talking with All Might, saying, That night, you seem to understand how someone who has great power bestowed upon them needs to think very carefully about how it puts others at risk and we move on to the next page with all might finishing saying his statement saying it's not only the wicked who seeks power and that's kind of a true line about what's going on i mean yeah it's a bad idea to bring up a uh, all for one to everybody in the class yeah it would it wouldn't make them if telling the truth that you got the seven other powers coming and um yeah this will not do well and the statement with a uh, yeah what and it and what All Might brought up kind of makes sense that maybe it should stay a secret as long as it can. Because there are some good reasons and the statement says that it's not only the wicked who seeks power. And it, what All Might is implying that uh, if someone learned about this power that you can basically become more powerful than you are. And you can also benefit getting seven more quirks after six other quirks besides the one you got that's a lot of power and if everybody knows about it what if some person just want to say hey that power should belong to me and i want it and i would do whatever it takes to steal it right from under them or betray them to gain more power to suit their own greed and and it's just like um the star trek uh quote perhaps they're all remembering that old saying power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely with people who have power 
will be corrupted by it. And and if you know someone who can give you more power, would you go freaking nuts and try to steal it and take it as your own? And even though that person could be your best friend, or if it's a jealousy kind of thing and you're jealous that that guy has too much power and he and that power should technically belong to you and you could do a much better job at it and i was thinking basically the same thought when uh, when eventually i just worry that when uh, endeavor finds out about this how do we not know that Endeavor is not going to snap and just try to say, Boy, that power should belong to the most more powerful hero on the planet, on, on the country, and that's me, and I want it. And that would totally undo all the character development that Endeavor has been going through. And, this, and that would just have him roll back into his old habits that he wants to be the number one, no matter how hard it will, no matter how bad it will get. So, yeah, I think it is a bad idea to tell Endeavor about that. I'm not sure if he won't go crazy and try to, f try to snatch all for one for himself to be even more powerful. But besides all that, we have... Bakugo continuing this this conversation, saying, Deku trusts you with all with his life, but And Bakugo just continues saying, In the notebook about the successors, okay. Your summary of the fourth was kinda half finished. Only that one. Okay, and we get a reference to the fourth uh to the fourth user, and that was the guy with the tattoo over his eye. That's number four, because it would be logical, because Banjo was the fifth, and we did see a flashback of the number four giving it all for one to Banjo, and etc., etc. As we see, the part of number four is kind of scribbled away, and not mentioned, so Bakugo's bringing up a very good question. I have a bad feeling about this. With Bakugo continuing saying, Meanwhile, you wrote down detailed notes for the others, like the cause of the cause of death for five, six, and seven. Why is that? And that's a good point, so either if number four did something so heinous and so bad all Might just wants to permanently remove four out of the records, or he's hiding very sensitive information that could be very bad about number four. Did number four did something so bad, or he wasn't, or was for not the heroic type, if you know what I mean? And, and that would also bring up the statement of. Those who seek power are not always the wicked. So we're moving on to the next page and we get a flashback to Bakugo with putting down the notebook when we first got it. And Bakugo continues saying, And then when I brought it up, you didn't tell me everything, huh? And what the hell's going on? We get Midoriya practicing with Bakugo to Bakugo continues saying, well, what is it? Did you figure out something about one for all? And All Might's kind of shocked by this and just saying, not yet. I don't want to speculate and talk about things I'm not sure of. And, Buck and All Might continues saying, because I'm worried for him. And we have a uh, all my continuing while we cut to Bakugo saying, You are too. And All Might continues while Midori still practice with the others saying, He's just deep down. He doesn't take himself... Oh, this is Bakugo saying, He's just deep down. 
he doesn't take himself into account, you know. He's always been like that. And now that he can do so much more, something doesn't feel right. It makes me want to keep him at arm's length. Back then, I ignored my own weakness, so I ended up bullying him. And we get the, yeah, um, and this kind of character development with all my counter-arguing saying, but now you're sincere, sincerely helping out with his training. And all my continues saying, that's your way of trying to atone, right? And we get that character development for Bakugo, so yeah. Bakugo came a long way too. And we get many texts of saying, Perception over power, nice and easy. And Midoriya saying, I get it. And think of it as an extension of your own body. And Bakugo continues saying, though, though, I'm sure he doesn't see it that way. And All Might continues saying, when I said you and Endeavor are a lot alike, I was talking about that change. He couldn't take a good look at himself either until I wound wound up like this. You'll get you'll get a chance to talk eventually. Not that not that I'm in a position position to say much. As after that, we quickly cut back out of the flashback with Bakugo and Endeavor with uh, Bakugo saying, Endeavor, you've got to make this final one count. As we quickly cut away with Midoriya just basically kicking Shigaraki through the chest. Doing one of his big attacks by kicking him. As we cut to the next page, Shigaraki does block it, I think depending on the art, and we get Midoriya's in a monologue saying, looks like he's adapting to my 100% attacks and taking hits, but... Oh, so he was attacking him with 100%. Okay. And Midoriya's saying, in his inner monologue, inner monologue saying, his wounds are healing slower. The damage is stacking. The last two 100% attacks wrecked my left arm. Shigaraki now possesses all for one. As we cut to the next page, with Midoriya's inner monologue, inner monologue continuing, saying, And one for all is a power passing down for the sole purpose of beating all for one. He has to go down here. As we quickly cut back to Shigaraki with Midoriya's inner monologue continuing, saying, Now's the moment. To let it all out. Everything that one for all has to offer. As we cut to the final page. We get a awesome double page spread of Midoriya kicking Shigaraki again. With Midoriya saying for the last chapter in his inner last page of the chapter of his inner monologue saying. No matter what happens to me as we get a saying of uh, next chapter will hit September 27th and that's the end of chapter 284 so basically this chapter was just more of the continuation of Midoriya and Shigaraki's fight just getting getting the main beef of the fight continuing and we did get that flashback and we also did get a few nuggets of new information on they that Midoriya did see me kind of practice before float was already unlocked for him and we also got that weird information about the fourth user wasn't as written very well as five six seven so yeah so there's that mystery with what's going on with four did he do something very bad and some or was he complete or was for completely villainous before he turned good and giving it to banjo so we'll just have to wait and see but i guess if they're bringing this up now 
I guess further down the line, four is going to four's quirk is going to manifest, and we're going to find out why it was four so blacklisted in the first place, and we'll all say, oh, so that's why. Okay, that makes sense. And yeah, this chapter's the these last few chapters have been getting better and better. And I don't know if we're just at the halfway mark of the war arc, or are we getting closer to the end of the war arc? And I guess the next chapter will still get a little more of that fight, or maybe we'll cut back to the whole Giga situation, having Giga trying to go to Shigaraki. So if Giga does get to Shigaraki before Shigaraki's fight ends, then Midoriya is going to be screwed even though he has float now so with that i will leave you all with that thought and i will see you on the next chapter next week so until then have a good day everybody and this has been your humble josh 24214 and i'll see you on the very next chapter so bye for now <laughs>